Hello and welcome to Ops and Bros. This week, uh, special request will be talking about Rattlers. Oh, which and, technically yeah. is not beer, but I guess we can still talk about it. For an open window on the crappy world, Max and Chris from Ops and Bros. Welcome to Ops and Bros. Yeah. All right, so Rattlers. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with beer mixology, where you would take a beer and then you would mix it with something else to make a drink out of it. So sometimes you're going to replace your pops, you're going to add like whiskeys and, and vodkas and stuff like that, and you're, you're going to have a beer mixology. So yeah. using beer in hard alcohol. But you can also do the opposite. So in Europe, a popular thing is actually to mix beer with pop. They've got different names for that depending on the region. But there's also one that's a lot more popular historically, which is the Rattler, which is basically... Lemonade with beer. Sparkling yeah. lemonade with beer. Sparkling, Sparkling lemonade, lemonade with beer. And, and uh, little, yeah, a little shout out to uh, Melting Tomato <laughs> on uh, YouTube, which left a comment. I uh, asked us we should do a Craft Beer 101 on Rattlers and recommended some beers from Soda City. Uh, some from Big Rig, and I think also, let me just double check, yeah, only those two, but uh, seriously, two really good contenders for uh, good Rattlers in Ontario. Back to you, Max, with the history of where did it all start it off? So it's actually a very interesting history. Uh, so it is pertaining to the cyclist in Germany. So this innkeeper in 1922 was running out of beer and in a panic decided, I'm gonna mix these two things together, sparkling lemonade and beer, and try to double whatever I have. Uh, and it was a popular place, especially for cyclists. They would stop by, grab a beer, then continue going. And the last thing you want is a drunk cyclist going all around. So I guess, you know, two birds, one stone. Uh, so he decided to mix the drinks and the cyclists really liked it. They were, they were impressed and they, they asked for it again. At least so the legend says. So, uh, so it would be Munich, uh, and it would be about 1922, although uh, some reports say that it was actually 1912, and it wasn't that innkeeper at all, it was in another kind of recipe. So, I mean, who knows what the truth is, but I like the cyclist story. I like yeah. the, the guy on the bi bicycle going, trying to get a beer, then goes, I want something more refreshing, how about this? Yeah, it's all about conspiracy theories. When you look back at older styles or older ways <laughs> to do beer, it's... Oh, but that guy said this and started this 10 years before or 20 years before. So conspiracy on this thing and conspiracy on that thing. But we do prefer the nice, cool, cute little story, right? This, this but, is how I mean, works. We see this also like for the Black IPA, which has a bunch of different names. And it wasn't, yeah. one of them is this region that was created, that, that, that the Black IPA was created in, although it appeared in a couple different regions at the same time. So, I mean, of course, when you look broadly at something, it looks like, oh yeah, that's the right answer. It might not be. Maybe some people thought of the same thing at the same time or a couple of years apart and they weren't even linked and it just kind of happened. Yeah. Um, I know we'll see this with the Milkshake IPA and with the New England IPA, like, yeah, sure, it was uh, East, East, East America, uh, Vermont specifically, but yeah. was that style popular somewhere else before? Who knows? We will never know. I'm pretty sure we'll never know. Uh, maybe some historians one day will just dive in deeper into all the Ups and Bros videos and see what, what's the right thing and what's the real story behind it, I think. Hopefully we'll be, be a good a, source, right? It would be a very scary thing if in the future <laughs> the 101s are the only things that remain on beer and people <laughs> study the channel and everything we say to try to figure out like well, how was beer back then? What was yeah. this? What is that? So please, I mean, keep the we books. try to be, yeah, we, we try to be very like accurate, but you know. <laughs> so speaking of being accurate, brewing a Rattler is not that hard. Um, but if you want to go like full DIY custom uh, recipe on that, then I uh, strongly recommend it to start with a nice batch of Pilsner. This is how it mostly started. It's a nice base style and brews well with different um, kind of like uh, grapefruity, citrusy pops to go with. So you start off, you brew a nice pilsner, uh, keg it, 
make sure it's ready then you or you can add the pop before kegging it so there's like different ways to add it but mostly after fermentation not while it's fermenting because yes you'll get extra sugars from those um, but you can also do your own pop lemonade too at the same time I'm not a lemonade brewer <laughs> usually I buy it already ready like you know the the green thing the green lemonade that usually they're like two bucks like the best lemonade in uh, grocery stores the lemons uh this uh, what's siltus i think or le lemonade you know the big green cardboard boxes green yeah green they're green for lemonade yeah for Shouldn't lemonade be like yellow no, no no it's green but there's a big lemon on it and it's like the cheap like the cheapest lemonade on the store in like the grocery store and it's the best okay. yeah okay and, I'll, I'll believe you yeah, yeah, so basically you can just buy a bunch of those and uh, add CO2 to them and you'll get kind of like a lemonade pop with it and mix it with your beer. Perfect ratio, 50-50, but it depends on how you want your beer to be. So do you want it a little bit more beery or a little bit more soda-y, soda-y, <laughs> lemonade-y? So um, I haven't drank a lot of like uh, Rattlers because it's just not in my chords. Like it's not something I've... I'm driving with to usually I just prefer a beer that's lighter of course something like a Berlin device or a kettle sour or something that's a little bit more uh, easy drinking but stays kind of like a hundred percent beer I don't want to get like on the debate of that but uh, I'll of it, course turn on it's just something... too sweet especially for beer yeah. drinkers you start drinking Rattlers and yeah sure they're refreshing but it gets to you the same thing with milkshake IPAs I feel like sometimes it's just too sweet and it kind of, I know we've been bringing this up and uh, I don't know why, it's just, I guess it's just that Facebook group we have. Anyways, yeah. uh, it, 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 uh. it kind of messes with my stomach and I go, ugh, very too sweet, I get queasy. So, I mean, yeah. good balance between both. Um, and actually, our pals at Big Rig have this cool concept that they didn't even think of when they brewed these two beers or this Rattler and this beer. It's their fans that went like, hey, by the way, what we do at home is this. And they took it and they ran with it. So, what you would do is you would grab their Big Rig Bongo and then Ooh. their Alpha Bomb and you mix them 50-50 in a glass. So, by doing this, you're actually doing a quarter juice or whatever, but the result is actually really, really good. The sweetness kind of, kind of gets cut by the bitterness of the IPA, which I guess you could do for a Rattler as well. Like instead of using a Pilsner, use something that's very, very bitter, and then it would cut yeah. the sweetness of your juice. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, uh, but if I'm not wrong, that that like the <laughs> Alpha Bomb is like 90 IBU, something like that. Like it's yeah, yeah, bitter. it's super high in IBU for like, sure. It's, yeah, it's a high one. So I'm pretty sure this is. Like, I'm right next to Big Rig, so I'll probably grab, like, a can or two and try it out, like, probably in the next few weeks. But Max... Honestly, Chris, you definitely have to. It's 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 shockingly good. I was playing D&D the other day, and, and a buddy of mine, his cousin, works at, at Big Rig, and he brought this, and he mixed it up. Garrett, shout out to Garrett if you see the video, yeah. by the way. You, you, uh, you, and, you play... And, wait, 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 wait. You play D&D? Yeah, I started playing D&D &D while I'm in, uh, I'm in school. So basically, we're trying to find other things to do than to go out of bar and drink beer. And we're like, oh, let's just stay home and drink beer. And we're like, <laughs> okay, well, what do we do while we do that? Might as well play D&D. &D. Some guy was a D DM. Anyways, Sweet. it's really fun. Like, if, if you have a good group and a good DM that's... that's that's a homebrew DM they call, which basically he's going to create his own <laughs> rules and not necessarily follow by the book. You can have a lot of fun. Anyway, so Garrett right. came by with the, with the Alpha Bomb and Bonko and mixed them up. And I was like, this is actually really good, but it's really dangerous. Because, I mean, you go from a 2.9% to a, the other one is 6 point something. So you're going back to about a 5% beer. Yeah, exactly. So. You get in the middle. Wow. Yeah. Damn, that. I learned so much stuff on that show. So I learned a lot about Rattlers today, but also the fact that Max plays D&D now. So, of course. congrats. Congrats to oh, everyone. A little, little secret, I used to play D&D before as well. It's on the what? First time. All of yeah. that? Ow! Ow. Why? Why? Why today? Why now? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those days. So, if you like this video, <laughs> please leave a like. Subscribe and let us know in comments below which one you would like to see next 
And uh, yeah, if uh, yeah, if you have any other suggestions, let us know. We love having suggestions. And if it's anything that's like on the parallel of beer, that's also interesting. Because I mean, Rattlers was not in our direct radar, but it was enough for us to go, hey, that's an interesting subject. Exactly, man. And uh, yeah, no worries. We won't do uh, D&D videos, but we might if, if I, it's cool. I would definitely if it yeah. was a, like if if I guess my crew's pretty interesting, but I I don't know. We'd have to have a big setup with cameras and all that. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> cheers, guys. <coughs> Max, say the last word. I don't want to say the last words this time. Oh, come on, don't do this. No, shit. Fuck off!